Good evening and welcome to Coldwater High School, to the Palace, where tonight WSN has a matchup of a pair of teams that are undefeated in conference play in the MAC. The winner of this game will at least share the conference championship and go on next week with a chance to win it outright. We have in town the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. They are 18-2, 7-0. The Coldwater Cavaliers are 16-3, and, and they are also 7-0 in MAC play. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Mr. Darren Gilbert. Darren, we just saw an incredible overtime JV game. We got a full house, and we got a MAC championship game on the line we tonight. We got a MAC championship game on the line with two of the best teams in Northwest Ohio, and it's going to be a slugfest. Two teams that are very well coached, uh, both coaches with an exceptionally a large amount of uh, wins to their credit. So, yeah, look, I'm, I'm really excited, Mark, like you are, to to see a fantastic contest tonight. Let's look at the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays the first, Darren. They are 18-2, 7-0. They scored at 63.9. They give up 47.3. Your analysis of the Blue Jays and what they need to do this evening. Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, Mark, and we talked about this in pregame, Delphi St. John's normally gets off to a good start. They are averaging, you know, well over, uh, well, first half numbers, 215, excuse me. They're outscoring their opponents by 215 points in the first two quarters. So it all starts with, a, you know, getting off to a good start. Obviously, we all know about what uh, Cam Elwer brings to the table, but he has a really good supporting cast of the Muncher brothers and also uh, his younger brother, Andrew, and, and, you know, Colin Feathers, and they all just play together. They shoot the ball exceptionally well. It's no secret. You know, they like to shoot the basketball from outside the arc, and they shoot it at such a high percentage. So, uh, you know, coming over here on the road, it's going to be important for them to get off to a great start. We know what damage they can create at the Vatican on the road. Let's see what happens here at Coldwater. The St. John's starting lineup will be number five, Colin Feathers. He is a 5'11 senior, averaging 1.4 points per game. Number 11, Cameron Elder. Elworth, 6'1 sophomore, 28.5 points per game, 7.7 .7 rebounds and five assists. Number 12, Austin Munter. Austin's a six-foot senior, averaging 5.3. Number 23 is Andrew Elwer, 5'11 freshman, averaging 7.9. He has 45 made three-point field goals on the season. And number 33, Aaron Munter. He is a 6'2 senior, 7.9 points per game and 3.8 rebounds for him. Well, Darren, the Coldwater Cavaliers, they are 16-3, 7-0, 54.2 on the offensive end, 44.1 on the defensive end. How about the Cavaliers tonight? Well, the Cavaliers are putting together, piecing a nice season together. You know, obviously 7-0 in the MAC. They've won six straight wins. You know, more importantly, nine out of their last ten. What they have is balanced scoring. They have two in double figures. They have two other ones right around seven points a game and another one is six. The big thing about them is they are just so doggone physical defensively and they are very long and they get their hands on a lot of deflections. And they shoot the ball really well, Mark, at about 52% clip inside the arc. Let's look at their starting lineup then for Coach Nick Fisher. Number zero, Balin Blockberger. He is a six foot junior, averaging 14.4 points per game, 3.1 assists. Number 11 is Brady Layfeld, six foot junior. He averages 5.9 points per game and nearly three assists per game. 21 is Owen Kunk, 6'6", junior, 6.8 and 5.3 rebounds for Owen. Number 33 is Miles Potcotter, 5'11", junior, 5.1 points per game. Number 42 is Luke Sweeterman, 6'7", senior, 12.5 points per game and 5.5 rebounds. It is Delphi St. John's. It is Coldwater for first place in the MAC with one week to go in the season. It's coming up next. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Palace here at Coldwater High School. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. Mark Schein and Darren Gilbert here. Darren, let's look a little bit about the history of where these two schools have been recently. Because if you are, uh, you know, if you're a, a Coldwater Cavalier, you have not won a league championship since 2003, and that year you tied Delphi St. John's and Marion Local. Your last outright championship was in 1995. Delphi St. John's tied for a league championship in 2013 with St. Henry. Their last outright championship was in 2005. The winner of this game gets at least a share of the championship. 
and see us with out right next week. Going to get a piece of the pie, so to speak. But, yeah, you know what? If you play the game, you want the whole pie. Yes, you know you what do. I'm saying? So, you know, th whoever comes on the short end of the stick tonight still has a chance. But, uh, you know, you're putting yourself one game behind with one game left. Well, as we will talk about as this game develops, Coldwater still has to go to Minster next week in league play. And Delphi St. John's will host Marion Local. Neither one of those are gimmies <laughs> next week. So whoever wins this one, they still got work to do. You betcha. Our officials tonight will be Steve Trout, Dan Holland, and Joe Turner, a veteran crew that we will see here this evening. And Darren and I want to take it just a moment before we get started. The very veteran commissioner of this league, uh, Mr. Don Kemper, is retiring at the end of this year. He has done a wonderful job here. He's going to be replaced by an equally wonderful guy in Rob Hemelgard. Absolutely. And, you know, Mr. Kemper, uh, I was looking to see if he was in the facility tonight. I don't see him anywhere, but uh, I'll, bet he, I'll bet he finds his way in here tonight. He's done a remarkable job with the conference, and I know he's passing it on in good hands. Well, you talk about can you find him in this crowd? <laughs> good luck, because yeah. uh, you know we were here at 10 to 6 looking for a parking place. And, of course, we have a, a nearly sellout crowd if it's not sold out. And I want to do one more prop, Darren. We, we put this all together last Friday night after we saw how these two teams went 7-0. and We really appreciate uh, Eric Goodwin, the athletic director, being so accommodating to put us in at the last moment. Guess who's down in the corner down here by the exit sign? Yeah. There he is. Yep. And here's here's our AD with a mop. Now, there's there's a guy like all ADs who do a lot of work. Yep. All right. We're going to have jump ball. It'll be Schwederman at midcourt. He will jump against Aaron Munter, 6'2 senior. And we will be playing for first place in the MAC with one week to go. Here's Steve Trout. He'll toss the ball for us. And this sold-out crowd is ready to explode. Schwederman tips it in the backcourt to Blockberger and then Brady Layfeld. St. John's man-to-man -man as expected. Owen Kunk looks inside. This is Schwederman. He has to kick it back out. Three ball. That one does not go for Layfeld. Scramble around. And as you might expect, we're going to have bodies on the floor all night long before Cameron Elwer comes away with it. Yeah, good job. Both teams scrapping after the basketball, keeping it really clean. Pull up three ball. Cameron Elwer, his 51st of the season here in game number 21. Yeah, the defense was not that bad on him. He just elevated and knocked it in. Owen oh, Kunk looks, looks, and has to give it up out front to Layfeld. This is Pot Cotter, and then down in the corner to Kunk again. Here's Schwederman. Schwederman can hit the three if they give him space. He's matched up with Colin Feathers. Well, they're and trying, they're, excuse me, they're trying to establish a little inside game, that being uh, Coldwater. The foul is called before Blockberger got a shot. He was pushed on the drive. And the foul will go to Austin Munter, his first team's first. Brady Leifeld is the inbounder. Lobs it out top to Schwederman. Leifeld comes off a screen on the out-of-bounds play. Shots blocked inside by Cameron Elwer. Pot cutter, ball's tipped loose by Elwer. Scramble for it, Leifeld's got it. He gets it to Schwederman. Good hustle by both ball clubs right there. Getting after it. Blockberger in the corner. Into the lane he goes. Couldn't get the step back shot. Here's a three that's going to go up. And Layfeld rebounds that one. Blockberger for three. We're tied. Big shot there by that young man. Cool as a cucumber. Got his feet set and let it rip. 31st three-point field goal in the season for Balin Blockberger. We're tied at three early on. Slip screen. Inside we go. Munter gets his shot blocked by Kunk. Good job defensively right there. Rotation. Blockberger off a screen, pull up from 17, short. And hustling after the rebound is Austin Munter. This is Aaron Munter, 33, brothers. Yeah, Aaron Munter has really turned his game up, especially on the perimeter, shooting the basketball like his teammates. Cameron Elward tried to get into the lane. Instead, he was fouled. 
see who that, that foul was. Pot goes Cotter, to. I think, partner. There it was. Pot Cotter had the assignment to guard him. His first team's first, and the ball goes sideline out of bounds with Feathers to be the inbounder. Winter tried to come off the screen. Elwer works inside to the corner it goes. St. John's makes 8.4 three-point field goals per game. And they are really good at that on the season. Step back jumper, no, rebound, Kunk. Well, what's even more impressive is the percentage, of, you know, the percentage of makes yep. is really hot. Here's Blackburger was trying to get into the lane. He got cut off by Colin Feathers, and he will pick up his first foul. Blockberger being a baseline out of bounder. To Kunk and Schwederman. Here's Blockberger in the lane. Scoop shot, no nope. rebound. Cameron Elwer. To the lane he goes, pull up jumper off glass. He's got five in the game. Yeah, if you're defending him, you can't get frustrated. That is a tough shot he just made right there. High little kiss off the glass. Darren, I'm not sure I've seen a player in a long, long time who can accept contact, lean back just a little bit, and score over defense. He's it's, really, really good at it. Oh, and his balance is unbelievable. Leifeld gets a three look. That one rims out. Blockberger rebounds, and he scores. That young man just plays with, with will and guts, man. He's all over the place. Loose ball there, knocked it down. Elwer, pull up rebound. jumper, he's got another one. He's got seven in the opening quarter. We played just four minutes. I can't even get done talking. He's <laughs> got the ball in his hands and it's already up. Blackberger comes off a screen. <laughs> to the corner, Blackberger gets a three look. Coldwater with their first lead. Blackberger's got three. Two three-point field goals in the quarter. Okay, it's Blockburger versus <laughs> Elwood right now. Right now it is. Aaron Mender works in the lane. His shot goes. Pretty move. Nice defense, too. Nice wall up. Just a better shot. Back and forth we go. St. John's with the lead now. We've got multiple guys ready to check in at the scorer's table. Leifeld. Blockburger. Kunk down inside to Schwederman, matched up with Feathers, and ball stripped loose. Elwer headed the other way, and scoop shot scores. He's got nine in the quarter. Yeah, that all started with a dig down from Aaron Munter, got his hands on it, created that turnover for the fast break for Cameron Elwer. St. John's fans coming to life. Kunk gets a three look. Splash. Big shot by that young man at the top of the key. Owen Kunk has made just seven three-point field goals on the season. That was a huge time to get number seven. Elwer stepped back again. That was long. Rebound, Leifeld. We're tied at 11. Really good job by Potcotter on the defense of Elwer on that shot. Nice contest. Sweeterman, a Kunk trying to back down inside. He's defended well. You talked about your wall up there, and there sure was. Sure was. I think that was Munter, Aaron Munter on the wall up right there. Nice job. Andrew Elwell has the basketball now. Blockberger has him. Feathers, Cameron Elwell. Matched up with Kunk now. Step back three. Not sure how you guard that, Darren. Well, I'll tell you what was even more impressive was a little quick crossover. I mean, it's yep. boom, boom, and it's gone. Step back. And that's a 6-7 kid defending. A pair of three-point field goals and 12 points total in the opening quarter. Cameron Elwer. Leifeld with the basketball. Trying to post up down inside was Blockburg. He got fouled from behind. See who they give that foul I to there. I think that's on 12. number 12. Yeah, yeah that's Austin his second. Munter, his second. Multiple substitutions into the game. Number 24, Joel Schrader for Dolphus St. John's. Number 10, Drew Boggs, also for St. John's. Uh, number two is in, that's Ty 
uh, Tyson McLean. We'll get the Coldwater guys here in just a moment. Pass inside. Blockburger goes off the screen. He scores. He's got 10 in the quarter. I'll tell you, Coldwater's really setting some real nice, solid screens, freeing their teammates, doing a good job rubbing shoulder to shoulder. 23, Cody Depwick is in. So is number 20, Caleb Schrader. That bounces out. Rebound to Schwederman. 113 to go, opening quarter. Blackberger thought he was going to pull it up. Schwederman thought about it too, and Schwederman will get a shot, but he's fouled beforehand. Fourth team foul of the quarter on St. John's. And we're going to have a conference for who actually the foul was on. Go against uh, number two? No. Yes, number two, Tyce McLean. His first. But it is 14 fouls on St. John, so with 1.06 to go in the quarter, and the other Blue Jay fouls <laughs> results in free throws. I'm laughing a little bit because Nick Fisher, Coach Fisher, wanted that yep. on the shot. Here's Layfeld. Blockberger trying to post up again. And Schwederman with the basketball, and he is guarded heavily by Drew Boggs, and that will be a, the fifth foul of the quarter. So the free throw line will go Luke Schwederman, a 77% free throw shooter on the season. He has a team to right just under 67% on the season. Not a bad free throw shooting team. He's the left-handed Schwederman. His first point of the game, we're tied at 14. Potcotter re-enters for Blockberger. Yeah, as you mentioned, 77%, 64 of 83 coming into the night. And that one rimmed out on him, and Cameron Elwell rebounds. Potcotter has him this time. Scramble for it, stolen. Defensive play, Potcotter. Layfell with the ball. And his coach just said, we want the last shot of the quarter. He's going to open the floor up, a little five-out action. This Blockberger's on the bench right here. We'll see where the shot comes from. Rims out for Potcotter and swooping in to grab the rebound is Drew Boggs. Now St. John's can play last shot of quarter number one. Potcotter goes to pick up Cameron Elwer. Yeah, you got to believe this basketball is going to stay in his hands until the last minute. Is he going to shoot or get a dump off? Step back three again. That one doesn't go. The rebound to Layfeld. He gets a throw at the quarter. And we played the first 18 minutes, and we're tied at 14. Second quarter coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Palace here at Coldwater. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. And our three point sponsor tonight is Playmore Lanes. For fun, excitement, and great food, get to Playmore Lanes in Coldwater, and they say go Cavaliers. Well, Darren, 12 for Cameron Elwer, 10 for Balaam Blackberger. Each team has another player or two to score, and we're tied at 14. 14 to 14 with three quarters to go here. Very clean play game. How many fouls were called in this well, first quarter? Well, we had quarter? five in the opening quarter on St. John's to one on uh, Coldwater. That went to Potcotter, and the only person in foul trouble is Austin Munter, who had a pair of fouls, and it will be St. John's basketball. And more as we importantly, start quarter two. Ron Rewinds back to zero yes, for that the it fouls. Does. Tice McLean with the basketball. We're going to see some 1-2-2 two, two zone now. I think it's going to flatten out there. I think Kunk will drop below the free throw line when the ball does. Yes, he does. Munter tries to get baseline. Cannot. Braden Klaus checked in for the game for the Blue Jays. He wears number three at the quarter break. Elwer. This is Klaus right here with the basketball. Elwer is in a free throw line area, jump shot. He's got 14 now. Big move there. Got to the middle of the paint there, about a 12 footer, high and soft over the defender. Nothing but the bottom of the net. His team takes an early lead here in this quarter. 
Potcotter. Schrader with the basketball. Here's Kunk on the baseline. Made a three-point field goal a moment ago. Bachberger has Elwer guarding him. He comes off a screen. Pass inside. Nice slip yes, screen. Yes, he was. Cody Deckwig with the slip screen and a nice pass from Blackburger. Tied at 16. Yeah, St. John's with the little switch action there and hit the slip screen guy, rolling to the bucket for the easy deuce. McLean looking for somebody and finally finds Feathers. And what? We got a timeout. Quick timeout. It's an official's timeout as they talk to the crowd about some of their activities. And I'm going to guess it was something pretty serious, Darren, because you want kids to come into this game and have a good time. They must have done something pretty serious over there yeah. to get a warning. Yep. Yeah, they were right on top of it. Our timeouts today are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Get an offensive foul on the screen, Darren. Yeah, they got an offensive foul on the screen, and Coach Elwers talking to Mr. Trout there. He didn't make the call, but he's communicating with him about it. Evidently, they just weren't set. It was on Colin Feathers, and Colin now has two fouls, joining his teammate, Austin Munter, with a pair. Schwederman looking for somebody, finally finds Blackburger. He gets cut off. Potcotter for three. And rimmed out, Cameron Elwer soars in to get the rebound. McLean, this is Andrew Elwer to the rim, and he will draw a foul on the floor. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. That was Balin Blockburger's first foul. Elward, McLean in the corner, and they switch. Cam Elward in the low post this time, trying to back down, and he will get called for an offensive foul. Cameron Elward's first foul of the basketball game. Yeah, the official's right on top of it, partner, and it looked like he dipped the left shoulder, or at least in the official's eyes, led with the left shoulder, which drew the offensive foul. Nice job there by Potcotter. Layfeld to set the offense. Potcotter looked at Schwederman on the cut, couldn't get it to him. Now they get it down inside. He turns into the lane, and he had a chance for an and one that didn't go, but he will get a couple of free throws. Yeah, they're starting to spy the mismatch in the post area, that being cold water, and they felt like there was a mismatch problem there with Schwederman. Free throws today are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Schwederman makes the first of his free throws. That was Drew Boggs' second foul. So there are now three Blue Jays who have a pair of fouls. Here's Schwederman again. Makes them both. He's got three points in the game. And his team leads by two. All from the charity strike. Three or four, if I'm not mistaken, partner. It is. Elwer comes off a screen. Gets into the lane. Pass to the corner. Jumper out of the corner. That one will not fall. And Sweetman goes high for the rebound and finds Layfeld with the outlet pass. Bachberger. Potcotter, they want to look down inside to Kunk and didn't go there. St. John's does a really good job with the hedge and helping recover. Schwederman inside again. Wants to turn with that left hand, but I think he traveled. Sure did. They dug down from the strong side with Aaron Munter. Caused just enough confusion. Got Schwederman moving his feet there in the post, that extra step. You get it tie your shoe type break here for a moment. A three-point sponsor today is Playmore Lanes. For fun, excitement, and great food, go to Playmore Lanes to get in cold water, and they say go Cavaliers. Andrew Elwer. And now Drew Boggs. Munter for three. Aaron Munter has five points in the game. He's made nine of 19 of those on the season. His team leads by one. Yeah, his percentage is really well. Whoa, from the parking lot. 
Balin Blackberger with his third. Playmore feet lanes three-point field goal. Elward to the rim. He got fouled. That will be before the shot attempt. I think that's Pot Cotter, I believe. If that's the case, his, that's his number or his second foul. That is correct? correct. Second on him and also second of the quarter. The Blue Jay basketball out of bounds. Darren, I talked to the football coach here, Chip Otten, prior to the JV game or during the JV game. He said last year, Balin Blackburn was a 5'10 sophomore. He weighed 150 pounds. He's a 6'1", 180-pound junior, and he is a competitor in three sports. And still growing. Yeah, that's true. Wonderful quarterback, good shortstop, and obviously having a great basketball season as well. Mentor gets another three look. Nope, can't pull the trigger against Blayfeld. Andrew Elwer. Three balls going to go up. That one will go for Drew Boggs. He's got 19 of those on the season. His first three-pointer of tonight. Well, there's the Schwerman down low, and he got pushed from yeah, behind. That's, yep. If that's Boggs, that's three on him. That is correct. Drew Boggs will pick up foul three and team four of the quarter. Schwederman does such a good job running block to block. We call it rim running, but yep. he also establishes himself, walks his man down and just turns and seals him up. That's a great job there by Schwederman. Joel Schrader will enter the basketball game with those three fouls that take place. There's Schrader out on top for Coldwater. And here's Kunk with the basketball. He's trying to back down, a little jump hook. That's a pretty well, move. It was. Owen Kunk's got five points in the game. This team's back up by a point. Jumper. Damn, Elwer. Yeah, it's, it's one of those 16. where you're a little speechless, you know? I, I, I mean, kind of waited. a great move. Well, he's only got four and a quarter. I mean, come on, we played five minutes. And 16 overall. Schreyer looks inside. Kunk again trying to back down. There's that jump hook again. And he makes another one. Yeah, he loves that left shoulder and that one hard power dribble. And that's twice he's got to it. Two for two from the field for the young man. Elwer passes inside. Ball fake. And it's blocked. But we're going to contact. I think they got Kunk on the way up. That is correct. Owen Kunk gets his first foul. The free throw line. Joel Schrader. Pair of free throws. As all the Blue Jays, I think, Darren, shoots free throws oh very goodness. well at 74%. That young man is a team just under 78, 77.9. Lee's famous rusty chicken is our free throw sponsor this evening. Uh, uh, once again, uh, Schwederman gets a rebound. He's got a bunch of them, it seems like, early on. We're tied at 25. Kunk inside. Pass. Layfell to the rim. A light, nice little rip action there from the top of the key on the dive down. Nice pass by Kunk, nice finish. And the Cavaliers go up by two until Elwer knocks down another Playmore Lane's three-point field goal. He's got 19 now and three three-point field goals. Blockberger tried to get off the screen and couldn't. Now he goes to the rim. Blockberger goes up. Missed the shot. Rebound comes out to Joel Schrader. And we will get a cold water foul. I think that's on Mr. Kunk. If that's the case, that's his second. Also the fourth team foul of this quarter, and that will bring Cody Depwick into the game for Owen Kunk with 2.16 to go here in quarter two. Tice McLean. And that foul will be assessed to Caleb Schreyer as he tried to guard Cameron Elward turning the corner. His first, and I believe that's the team's fourth. Is that correct? Nope, it's fifth. They didn't put it up on the scoreboard, but Elward will go to the free throw line. He's an 87% free throw shooter, Darren. His numbers are just off the charts all the way across the board, partner. 20 for him in the opening quarter. And another one, 21 for him in the opening quarter, opening half, 12 in the first quarter, and now nine in this one. His team leads by three. 
And we're going to get a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services. Back in a minute, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Coldwater at the Palace. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Timeout, Nick Fisher's team. I think he saw a three-point deficit. He wanted to gather the troops here for the last two minutes. Yeah, I think he wants to talk, you know, high-quality shot here, high-quality possession. Bachberger tried to go back door as well defended. Depwig inside. Mayfield's going to get a three, and he made it, and it's a foul call. That's, that is a high percentage shot. That's great execution by the Cavaliers, plus we got a foul inside with a hold. The three-point field goal, sponsored by Playmore Lanes this evening, goes for Depwick. I'm looking to see the foul win against Tice McLean. Yeah, I think they got him with a hold down inside, if that's the case. He we're, going to get a, we're going to get two more free throws right here by Depwick. Tyce McLean now has two fouls. Depwick goes to the free throw line. He's going to shoot a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Bounces away. Into the basketball game will come Braden Klaus, 5'11 sophomore, to replace Tyce McLean. That's four different Blue Jays now have, have uh, uh, well, three of them had two fouls and then three fouls on Drew Boggs. So the fouls are mounting up for the visiting Blue Jays. Rebound to Aaron Munter. We're tied at 30. Elwer. Cameron goes off a screen to his brother and gets it back again against Schreyer. Pull up three. Back to the rim to Blockberger. Blockberger pushes the other way. To the corner it goes. Schreyer looked at it, goes into the lane. Works, and Schreyer goes up, missed a shot. Depwick battle, so does Munter, and the ball comes away to Aaron Munter. And he lost it, and we're going to get a foul. Let's, let's see who they're going to get here. Okay. The foul went to Cameron Elward. That's his second. And to the free throw line will go Brady Layfeld. He will shoot a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That one bounced out. Yeah, Back into the game comes Kunk. I'm sorry. You, no, what I was going to say is that, you know, if you're Delva St. John's right now, you know, you're on thin ice because if, if Coldwater makes those free throws, you know, they could very easily have this to a two possession game. The second one does go in for Layfeld. He's got six in the game now as we're approaching a minute to go. Munter into the lane. Kickback. Andrew Elwer pull up from 17. Short. Rebound. Layfeld. Blockberger. He finds Kunk inside. And Owen oh, Kunk goes up and scores. He's got nine in the opening half. You got to love the ability and the effort running rim to rim. Elwer oh boy, pull that up was, jumper. That one was close, partner. 23 for him in the opening half. Pretty move. That really was. And now we'll see if Coldwater gets the last shot of the quarter. They wanted it in quarter one, didn't get it. Bachberger. Cam Elwer has him. Cam's got a couple of fouls. A lot of Blue Jays on the floor don't want to pick up a foul here. They've gone flat. Let's see if they bring a high screen or just let Blockberger play. He works. He works. Blockberger step back three. The rebound came into the hands of Braden Klaus. And we have played the first 16 minutes of exciting high school basketball. The Cavaliers will take a one point lead to the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater to the Palace, where we have our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. 
Bring your resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. Mark Schein, Darren Gilbert here. In the opening quarter, each team scored 14 points. In quarter number two, Coldwater put up 19. Delphi St. John's put up 18. Hence, we have a one-point lead for the Cavaliers, Darren. Well, we said we we sort of laughed. Both of us have been, have been into many halftime speeches with players. You know, what adjustments do you make? And we both jokingly said, just keep playing the game. Keep playing. You know, just yep. keep playing the game. It's been very clean played at both ends of the floors as far as turnovers and rebounding and shooting the basketball. You know, what do we look for in the second half? You know, St. John's has got to. We apologize. We've had some technical difficulty. We've gotten back on the air. While you were out, we had a foul that was called and a pair of free throws made by Luke Schwederman. Our score is 35 32 on a pull up jump shot right there by Austin Munter. And Coldwater with the basketball again. We're a minute into half number three, number two. Yeah, Schwederman's had a big night on the glass at both ends of the floor. They fell to the rim, missed a shot. Rebound into the hands of Austin Munter. We'll go the other way with Cameron Elwer. Step back three. Good defense that time by Potcotter. Elwer leans back again. That one missed. Sweetman with another rebound. 90 seconds in. St. John's yet to score in the half. Just two points for Coldwater. Potcotter. Yeah, all you can do is if you're Coldwater defensively is to force Elwer into a tough shot. Blackburger saved it. Sweetman for three. Elwer, Cameron with a rebound. Numbers going the other way. He goes off traffic and will draw a foul. Gets Potcotter, I believe. Miles Potcotter picks up his third foul to the free throw line to shoot Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws will be Cameron Elwer. You can get Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Elwer makes the free throw. He's still got that lengthy streak going without missing a free throw. Here comes shot number two as Caleb Schreyer will enter the basketball game. And that one also goes 25 now, and we're going to get a timeout for St. John's. 6.09 to go in the third. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Coldwater at the Palace, where tonight our free throw, our timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services. Darren, quick timeout here in the half by Coach Aaron Elwer. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just curious. On, evidently, he saw something there that he thought maybe he can exploit, whether it be at the defensive end or at the offensive end. But, uh, yeah, he's going to take his first one. Both coaches now have used one full timeout each here early in the third quarter. Coldwater still with that lead of 35-34. Checking my free throw numbers here for Elwer. Made all four tonight. And we're back. Balin Blockberger with the basketball. Schwederman. Pass inside. Leifeld, he goes up through traffic. Good defense by Elwer. Sure was. He got beat initially, but did a good job on the recovery and also walling up. Elwer for three. So another Playmore Lanes three-point field goal. He's got 28 in the game now. His team leads by two. Looking inside to Schwederman. Feathers is guarding him with three fouls. Yeah, good job uh, with the help side, especially. He'll give and go. The ball ends up in Caleb Schreyer's hands. He's got his first basket of the game. We're tied at 37. Really good recognition by well, the Cavaliers. Nowhere off glass. Nope. I think the foul came before the shot occurred. They get Schreyer on that. Let's take a look. Let's see, I think that's correct. Caleb Schreyer second. Into the basketball game will come Tyce McLean and Andrew Elwer will take a seat. McLean will be the inbounder. 
three-point field goal tonight sponsored by Play More Lanes for fun, excitement, and great food. Get to Play More Lanes in cold water. They say go Cavaliers. Munter spins into the lane, and he traveled before he could get the shot off. Yeah, he really showed good footwork spinning back to the middle. The problem was Mr. Schwederman rotated from the backside and got himself established, causing Munter to take that extra step for the travel. Blockberger takes a lob pass on the flare screen. Skip pass. Schwederman gets a three look. A long Black, Blockberger rebounds and his scoop shot goes. He's got 15 in the game. Yeah, that's though. one of those where he just beat Cam Elward to the basketball right there. Not only did he beat him to the spot, but he did a good job on the reverse layup to the finish. Elward was trying to get into the lane and was fouled again by Caleb Schreyer. That will be his third. It is also the team's third as Drew Boggs enters. Drew has a three-point field goal, but also three fouls. 4.38 to go, Darren. St. John's doing what they want to do. They've got fouls, another two fouls. They'll be shooting free throws the rest of the quarter. That's a great point, Mark, and that's what they want to do. They want to get to the charity stripe. Schwederman cuts off a dribble drive. Boggs for three. He's got another one. Well, how big is that shot from just yes, coming sir. off the bench? His that's 20th three-point yeah. field goal of the season. Another play more lanes, three-point field goal. Stripped loose on the baseline. Blackburn was staying out of bounds. Good job there by... Austin Munter forcing the ball to the baseline and like you said, dribbled the ball out of bounds. The Cavaliers did from that turnover. Single point lead, Blue Jays. McLean will set the offense. Blockberger harassing him and finally finds Austin Munter or Aaron Munter. And Aaron loses it and who hit it? It goes out of bounds off of Schreyer. Four minutes to go, quarter number three. Has anybody had more than a three-point lead, Darren? No, I, I don't believe I cannot so. remember. We've, we've seen a lot of swings in the scores, right, as far as leads. Yes, sir. This is where if you're if you're the visitors, you got to make sure you're strong with the basketball. Munter spins in the lane and scores. Aaron Munter's got seven in the game. That's a pretty strong move and a great job with a little step-through action there. Footwork by Mr. Munter. There's your three-point lead, and... There's a lob inside, Schwederman, that was really well done. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Lay fell through a beautiful lob pass there after the backside cleared out. Good job by Schwederman catching and finishing. Kunk rebounds, the miss. So after a three-point lead, Cavaliers can take the lead. And tip loose, banged away. Really nice defensive play by McLean, but Coldwater keeps it. Yeah, Cavaliers really fortunate not to turn it over. Schwederman goes up through traffic and missed a shot. Under pressure, the rebound, Austin Munter. His team's still up to Aaron Munter, wanted to work the lane, and we get a hole. That one goes to... Owen Kunk, Owen's third, and team's fourth of the quarter with 2.52 to go. St. John's has just a single foul here in this quarter. They're going to bring in a couple guys off the bench. Andrew Elwer wears number 23, and Joel Schrader. Yeah, I think it's more so to get Boggs to try to protect him from getting that fourth. I believe he had three fouls before coming out. Austin Munter with the basketball, and he's headed to the rim. And Schwederman knocks the ball out of bounds. Yeah, there's that length right there, just getting that deflection. Agreed. Single point lead, Blue Jays. And Cameron Elwer will be the inbounder. Out on top to Andrew Elwer. And back to Cameron. Andrew goes baseline, gets cut off, and there's Kunk in the way. And his coach takes a timeout. 2.28 to go in the third. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067, or you can visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Save the possession right there, Darren. That's why he, he sure called did. the timeout. Yep. Yeah, he dribbled the ball the baseline into the double-team trap. And Coach Elward, Johnny on the spot right there, going to take a 30-second timeout. Good job there by him recognizing that to save the possession. Coldwater has used one timeout. St. John's has used two in the contest. Cameron Elward. Tice McClain with a three look. And just a little bit hard. Blackburger went to the corner and... The ball went out of bounds off the Cavalier. Tice McLean to inbound in a very difficult. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not going to be Tice McLean. It's going to be Austin Munter. And he gets the ball inbound, though, to Schrader. Austin Munter with the basketball, looking to his coach for an assignment. Working against Layfeld. Baseline jumper, long. Schriedemann with the rebound. Yeah, Coldwater's really tightened it up defensively here in this third quarter. Right now, Cam Elworth sitting on 28 after having 23 the first half. Both teams have been solid defensively in the, in the quarters. We're going to get a foul that will go against Andrew Elworth, his first. St. John's has scored 10 in the quarter, and eight have been scored by the Coldwater Cavaliers. So it's been a defensive quarter both ways. Feathers will re-enter, as does Aaron Munter. And also back in will be Cody Depwig. And Will Barry will enter for the first time for the Cavaliers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that matchup. That's two big, strong kids going at one another inside with Munter and Barry. Depwig stolen, however. Good defensive play. Aaron Munter to anticipate the play. McLean's ahead of the pack and has to bring it back out. And finally, the ball ends up in Cameron Elwer's hands, guarded by Caleb Schreyer. And he goes to the rim and gets an and one opportunity. Yeah, that's one of those. If he's going to turn the corner and get to the rim, as strong as he is, he is you don't want to create a malicious foul, but you want to make sure he doesn't get out of get it out of his hands. Or if you're if you're not going to foul him, you just got to let him go. And right there, they got him on the dribble drive, and you're going to get the old-fashioned and one. Uh, Will Barry picks up the foul as we head to the free throw line for Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. 31 in the game. Cameron Elwer has made uh, all five of his free throw opportunities this evening. Sweeterman's back in the game. I think this is the first time we've had a four-point lead, Darren. It's 45-41, St. John's. Yeah, and I think Coach Fisher, you know, he's he's realizing this four-point lead could easily grow, and I think that's part of the reason why I put Schwederman back into the game. This is Schwederman right here. He's going to get a screen from Depwig, but not use it. Austin Munter's done a really good job on Blockburger, and they doubled him up in the low post. And Munter gets a steal. Boy, Austin Munter played that possession defensively about as well as you can. Yeah, and you know what? He didn't slap at it. He took the basketball. You know, when you take the basketball, the officials are more inclined to call the slap than they are taking it out of, your, out of their possession. Blockburger's second foul to the free throw line. Will go Austin Munter. Shooting a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That one's a bit short. But not that one. Dead center. It's a five-point lead, 46-41. Cavs looking at just eight points here in the quarter with under a minute to go. Schreyer working and lost the ball off his leg. Solid defensive pressure, Tice McLean. Yeah, Mr. McLean was right up there with pressure, forcing that turnover. Andrew L. were back in the game. I think the Blue Jays want to play last shot of the quarter. Cam Elwer. 
31 in the game for him so far. And they've got the floor isolated for him. Here comes a trap. Nope, they're going to back out of it. See Coach Elwer calling the set. See if he lets Elwer play one-on-one -on -one or if he gets him a high ball screen. Let's him go to the rim is what he does, and he gets fouled going to the rim. He gets Depwig, I believe, partner. Let's see who they assess it to. It is Cody Depwig's first foul, and the free throw line will go. Cameron Elwer again for two. 31 points in the game, and he missed one. That's like big news, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Shoots 87 plus percent on the line from the line this year. He was uh, is now, uh, let me see, five for six. And six for seven on his leaves. Famous recipe chicken free throws. He's going to get a break and be replaced by Drew Boggs. Here's a good idea. He gets an extra break here heading into the quarter. The extra 10 seconds, doesn't he? Yeah. Six point lead, Blue Jays. Cavs need a basket to finish the quarter out. Blockberger has it. Good defense. Couldn't get the shot off. Schreyer, three-point shot. Schreyer, that's a huge shot. Oh, how big is Schreyer's shot right there? The, the sophomore the knocks up a huge three-point play at the end of the quarter. Cuts the lead to four as we head to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Palace of Coldwater. Our scoreboard brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your own backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. It was a 15-11 quarter for St. John's, hence the three-point lead as we go to the next eight-minute segment. And Darren, I'm not going to say the final segment because this thing has overtime as a strong possibility. Well, I'm telling you, we got some kids stepping up in the clutch here for both ball clubs. Munter goes into the lane and he will get called for an offensive foul. Aaron Munter's first foul of the game. 13 seconds into quarter number four. Good job stepping in right there, taking that charge for the Cavaliers. Blockberger. Potcotter, Leifeld, starting lineup in the game for the Cavaliers. Yeah, after that hot start by, by Mockberger, he's, the Blue Jays done a pretty good job slowing well, him down. Well, he just got a three look and nailed it. And guess what, I think he, <laughs> I think he found his range, didn't you? I think he hurt me, didn't he? Play more lanes, three point field goal. This pass goes to Munter. He has to kick it back out. And we're tied at 47, seven minutes to go in regulation. Andrew Elwer looking, Tice McLean. Munter ball fakes and goes to the rim and gets cut off by Schwederman. Three out of the corner. But you know what oh, they did? Oh my panic. goodness. They did not panic and they shared the basketball side to side. Attacked the rim and then swung it to the backside. Great Aaron, job. By Aaron the Blue Elwer's Jays. first three-point field goal of the game. For fun, excitement, and general great food, go to Playmore Lanes. In Coldwater, they say go Cavaliers. 46 three-point field goals for Andrew Elwer. Picked a great time to get his 46th one of the season. Blackberger, who has 18 points in the game. And looking, and finally has to lob it way out in front to Kunk. And Leifeld goes and gets the basketball so they can set their offense. Potcotter looking inside. Blockberger gets another three look. That's off the rim. Potcotter hustling for the rebound. So is Andrew Elwer, and Elwer gets the basketball. Yeah, Andrew just beat him to the spot by about a half a step. Good hustle by both ball clubs going after that. Cam Elwer, Schwederman in front of him. Elwer step back shot. Shot that over a six foot seven guy for 35 points and another Playmore Lane's three point field goal, six point lead. Sweeterman saved it and his coach calls timeout. 
5.52 in the game. Blue Jays up by six. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at Coldwater, Coach Nick Fisher has taken his second time out of the basketball game. Nice time out to brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. It's a six-point lead for the Blue Jays, and I think that's the reason why Coach Fisher called timeout. He wants to get his guys organized here with 5.52 to go. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Schwederman made a heck of a play right there with that length saving that basketball in front of Coach Fisher. That could have very easily been a crucial turnover for uh, the Cavaliers. Now the excitement starting uh, to pick up by both uh, sides of the crowd here, partner. It's starting to get loud in here. Cameron Elwer has 35. Balen Blockberger has 18 to lead their respective teams. And this is Blockberger with the basketball. He's guarded by Austin Munch, who's done a nice job with him for the most part tonight. Blockberger wanted a shot coming off the screen. They get Schwederman inside instead. They had to switch and in the process, so Munter ended up with Blockberger and Schwederman oh, bounce passes cut. the ball. What a play. Big pass and cut. cut. How about that? Really a nice pass and a good finish oh. inside for points 19 and 20 for Balin Blockberger. Elward chooses to back it out. Layfeld's coming after him from behind. McLean for three from the corner. Bounces out. Rebound Blockberger. It's a four-point lead. Cavs scored coming out of the timeout. Let's see if they can tack on another one here. Tried to get Schwederman inside. They switched again. That puts Austin Munter on Blockberger. And Blockberger was trying to spin in the lane. I think they got yeah, Aaron Munter. That was actually Aaron Munter, wasn't it? Yeah, my mistake. His second. And that's the second team foul. Cavs have not committed a team foul here in quarter four. Kunk. Schwederman. Layfeld came open inside off the flex cut. It's stripped loose, but it's fouled. Let's see if it's Andrew Elwer. Well, more importantly, partner, they're calling it on the shot. They are for a fact. It was. I think that was on. Uh, well, they didn't put. Well, Layfeld makes the free throw. I think that was on 0.7 for him. I believe. Well, it looked like it. They didn't put it up on the scoreboard. I'm going to go with that. Layfeld makes the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. And I think the score was actually asking who the foul was on. Yeah, that's, that's what the buzzer was for. I, I believe the foul it was, uh, it was on Andrew, Andrew Elwer, right? Yeah, Andrew Elwer. You know, they didn't officially post yeah, it, but I think that's right. Free throw bounces out for Layfeld, so the lead will be three. Cameron Elwer with the basketball. Oh, he got loose and went to the rim and scored. Cameron Elwer, 37. Blockberger working. Schwederman lobs to Kunk inside. Kunk gathers and shoots it a bit hard. And the rebound comes down to Austin Munter. Yeah, tough break right there. He did everything right, caught it high, kept it high. Just banged it a little bit too hard off the, the glass. Cameron Elwer. Schwederman's matched up with him. They got switched a moment ago. And five count, and he got around him. End of the count. Elwer goes around him, and that will be a foul that will go against Luke Schwederman. I believe that's just his first. Well, more importantly, if you're St. John's, you got to love the fact that he's guarding Cam Elwer because he can run him and fatigue him a little bit. And that's what exactly what yeah. Coach Fisher's doing. He's going to get him a quick rest here for this final 338. Brought Cody Depwick in, and Luke Schwederman gets a break. 
To the backcourt it goes to Cameron Elwer. Off a screen by Aaron Munter. And they switched again, so Deppwick's got him. Potcutter's trying to get back to him. Here he comes with a trap, and Deppwick sees it. Good job rotating defensively. Boy, that was close yeah, right was. there, wasn't it? Layfeld about got one. But instead, the ball goes to Austin Munter. He spins and goes to the rim. Aaron Munter for three, back of the rim. Battle for the rebound. Blockberger tips it to Kunk. Smart, heady basketball play right there by that young man. Popcotter gets a three look that hits the rim. Scramble for the rebound. And Austin Munter had the basketball, and his coach got a timeout with 2.45 to go in the basketball game. We're going to take a break also. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. You can visit our website, WSN.TV, for scores, standings, access to our broadcast schedule, and the WSN apps. That's where we go every time we have a chance, especially at halftime, right, Darren? You betcha. Yes, sir. It's a 55-50 lead for the Blue Jays. They have taken three timeouts and have two remaining. They have committed three fouls here in quarter number four. Colwater has called two timeouts, so they have three remaining. They have committed just one foul, and if it comes to this, the possession arrow favors the Cavaliers. Yeah, we're far from being over, partner. Yes, sir. That 245 is a lot of time left. And the ball will be out of bounds on the baseline to the Blue Jays. And the inbounder will be Drew Boggs. And he's going to get the ball back from Austin Munter and advance the basketball and get him into their set. Trap coming. Blocked oh, by block. Sweeterman. What a big block. Yes, sir. I think they got a push also. I would agree. Aaron Munter went to the rim. Sweeterman blocked it. Let's see what the call is. It goes to Austin Munter. That's his third and the team's fourth here of the quarter. So free throws for the rest of the game now for the Coldwater Cavaliers. What a block. You know what? And, and you, you, you can't fault Munter because he's trying to be aggressive and take the ball to the basket. But like you said, just a better play defensively with that length. Mr. Schwederman rejected it and didn't foul him in the process. Dalen Blockberger. Owen Kunk. Luke Schwederman. Blockberger runs off two screens. It gets picked up by Aaron Munter. Keeps working, keeps working, and. I think they got Munter with a block. Partner. That is correct. Aaron Munter gets his third, and more importantly, perhaps, it is Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw time for the Coldwater Cavaliers. With 20 points, Balaam Blockberger, 74% free throw shooter, has not been there yet this evening. That's point 21. Four point lead for the Blue Jays. See both teams starting to play offense, defense now, Darren. Yes, they are. And you know, more importantly, if you're Coldwater Cavaliers, you've got three fouls to give, Mark, in this final two minutes and 12 seconds. And rolled that one in around the rim. 22 in the game for Balin Blockberger. Cam Elwer, trap. Duncan Potcutter, what a pass. He found a cutting Andrew Elwer through two guys. What a pass. Sure was. I mean, that was a Kunk for three. Pass. Splash. <laughs> Owen oh, Kunk's got 12 in the game as he makes a play more lanes three-point field goal. It's a two-point game. Austin Munter dribbling the basketball. Finally finds a teammate, Tice McLean. And big time pressure. And we're going to get a held ball that will go the way of the Cavaliers. 
got him. Officials right on top you of have, Got him trapped right there at the sideline. Absolutely. Typically, you don't teach your guys to reach in, but when you have a chance to grab the basketball, you do, and they got a held ball, and it's a two-point game with 90 seconds to go. Well, and it also puts Coach Elwer in a tough position because, like you said, he only had two timeouts left. Yes, you're correct. Well, because they had three timeouts left, they have the ball trailing by two. Coach Nick Fisher can take a timeout with 130 to go trailing by a couple. It's a Mesker Financial Services timeout. We're going to keep it right here, Darren. Because we want to talk about our brand new app, the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all our area scores with the WSN app. You can download the app for free from Android or the Apple Store or visit WOSN.tv. I thought you were going to ask me what, what would you do in this uh, situation. Danny does that to me all the well, time. Well, you know what, Darren? I gave up a long time ago trying to coach games because <laughs> these guys know a whole lot more about their team and their That's opponents than exactly I do. That's exactly right. Let them run the set that works them both. It, it, it'll be a really interesting thing. Who defends who? Are we going to switch screens? We're going to fight through them. It, it's just a, a chess match here in the last 90 seconds of two talented teams and two talented coaches. And it's been very well played Absolutely. You know, by both ball clubs. You hate to see a winner and a loser here. Somebody's going to come out on the short end of the stick, but I'm telling you what, 1.30 to go. You made a reference earlier about an overtime. Uh, it could very easily happen. Owen Kunk win down. Brady Leifel with the basketball. Schreyer on the sideline to Kunk on top. And now Blockberger, he's been guarded much of the game by Austin Munter. He goes back door, gets a catch, and left-handed oh, finish. What a finish. The defense was wow. solid, but what a better shot with the left hand. We're tied at 57. He avoided the charge. He got the ball up with his left hand, and we're tied at 57. Now what do the Blue Jays do? Are they going to play last shot? They have two timeouts remaining. However, Coldwater only has one foul, Darren. Yeah, they've got three to give. And the crowd is coming to life. People yeah, starting to stand throughout the entire gym. Austin Munter now over to the corner to flower feathers. Coach Elwer standing near an official. You notice there's two guys shading him. So they're playing two guys on three on that back side. And that's going to get a timeout. 13.9 seconds to go. St. John's with a 57-57 all and time. They have the basketball, but you know what this timeout also does, Darren? It gives Coach Fisher a chance to tell his guys, we have three fouls to give in 13.9, and we can disrupt anything that they want to do. Just don't foul a shooter. Absolutely. You, you can guarantee, take this to the bank, he's going to double team outward some, some fashion. Somehow. You've got to believe that if his philosophy is going to be if we're going to lose, you know, but the problem you're going to run into here, Mark, the kid is such a phenomenal high IQ basketball player. We saw that earlier with the with the whip around pass yep. there for that layup. So you've got to be the other three guys have to be mentally focused on what their task is at hand right here to try to force this either in overtime or get the basketball back and put yourself in a position to possibly score to win it. Well, if this thing should end in 13.9 or whenever it comes to an end, Darren and I will take a break. We'll come back with our Sally Hustle Award winner. Give some final wrap-up thoughts, and then we'll try to get an interview with the winning coach. I'm not sure this thing is going to end in 13.9, Darren. You know what? Let's let's, let's let the chips happen where they fall where they may, and let's see what happens here, partner. Ball is going to be out of bounds on the sideline in front of the St. John's bench. Yeah, Potcotter's matching up with Elwer right now. Pass inside, back it goes, and now. Elwood matched up with Potcotter, and there's a foul. There's one. Potcotter has four fouls, however, with 7.1 to go. But that is just the second team foul. Austin Munter headed inside and 
Schwederman gets called for a foul with 4.1. That's Luke's second. And will be baseline out of bounds. With one more to give. One more to give. And this will be a timeout for Delphi St. John's. Another Metzger Financial Services timeout. Uh, I think, Darren, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's what I have. I would believe that is it with four points. This is a uh, one of the scoreboards that does not put timeouts on the board, but I believe this is their final one with 57 all tie and 4.1 to go. There still is a foul to give, Darren, but you sure don't want to have a catch and shoot and foul that type, that person going up for the shot. Absolutely, yeah. You want to try to get a shot off as much as possible. It'll be interesting to see what, you know, Coach Elwer not having that timeout left to see what happens here, to see what he's going well, to draw up. Of course, the other part of this is Coach Fisher has two timeouts from any. He can look at the lineup and the set and decide. And may, and may burn one right yeah, here. Yeah, may That's burn one to, to see how they want to defend it. Let's see. And there is that call. <laughs> Coach Fisher's as close to midcourt as you can get, and nobody saw him. You know, Darren, you and I both talked to Coach Fisher before the game. He is not a small man. He's not and a small man. He's on there he, making every effort he can to get somebody betcha. to see him. Yep. And, and finally got the officials' attention. Again, with 4.1 seconds to go, tied at 57. You know, what he's done with the program here, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, and we saw a phenomenal JV game. Both teams laid it on the line. Yes, we sir. We actually had a young man that got sick during the game, mm, ran yes. over into one, one of the baskets and then turned right around, got some water, and went right back in to play again. It was a wonderful JV game tonight, won by Delphi St. John's in overtime, 49-47. I'm not so sure we haven't seen the first of two overtimes tonight in that JV game. I, I'm starting. We'll see what happens I'm on this inbounds feel play. the same way, partner. Might be cold and snowy outside there, and it's warm in the it's gym, my man. It's very warm in here. Yes, There's not one person that is sitting and down in this correct. gym. Spot out of bounds. Austin Munter to inbound. Looking, finally gets it inbounds. Elwer for three out of the corner. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Cameron Elwer, Darren, from the corner with a guy in his face, buries another three-point field goal, and they will take a 60-57 victory. And look at him celebrate, Darren. You know, and the thing was, Coldwater did a really good job defending that. That's just a big-time shot by a big-time basketball player, and the shot he hit was right over by their fans, and it was hurt near on the sideline. And like you said, he shot it over maybe one, two, de definitely one defender. Could have been two. An unbelievable, Just an unbelievable final shot. Big time Absolutely. shot. Delphi St. John's will take an 8-0 record in the conference into their final conference game next week when they host Marion Local. Darren and I will have the Stolly Hustle Award winner and the post-game show after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Mark Schein, Darren Gilbert, back here at the Palace in Coldwater. I'm not sure, Darren, how we talk about it in words. Cameron Elwer with a three from the corner, his 40th point of the basketball game, and they win this one by three, 60-57. Uh, an unbelievable game by both teams, but Delphi St. John's comes out on top. Delphi St. John's comes out on top, but you got to give a lot of credit to Coldwater and their valiant effort. But St. John's hit the shot at the end of the game. I thought Coldwater did a great job defending it. Agreed. And it was just a shot from the corner that that kid has dreamed of and has done all of his life. And he buried one with no time left on the clock. And they're going to get out of here at the 60-57 win in regulation. We're going to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight.
You can check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle War winner page on the WSN YouTube page. And, Darren, we, we talked about a lot of guys because there's not a player tonight who didn't play hard as the Stolly Hustle War winner talks about, but, but we just have to go with Cameron Elwood this evening. Cam Elwood, there's no question. When you put 40 on the board, he had 23 at halftime. He willed his team, especially in the second half, and uh, you know, hit the big shot when he needed to. And uh, they yep. they're definitely got a piece of uh, the championship. Coldwater will go to 16 and four, seven and one in the conference. They were led by 24 tonight by Balin Blackburger, 12 from Owen Kunk. They had quarter scores of 14, 19, 11, and 13 for their 57. St. John's will go to 19 and two. They will go to 8-0 in the conference, and you can see that uh, they're getting a, a piece of the conference championship right now. And appreciate that, uh, what they're doing here this evening at 7-1. Uh, at 8-0, I mean, somebody, I guess, they, they play Marion Local next week, and they could uh, ha, you know, have a chance to have someone tie with them next week. Cam Elwer goes for 40. 7 tonight from uh, Aaron Munter. 6 from Drew Boggs. Uh, Darren, I'm not sure you could have a better high school basketball game than what we had tonight. You can see him passing out right. the trophy right and, there. You know, and here's the thing. I want to say something about Coldwater and their community. There's not a lot of these fans from, from Coldwater that has left the gymnasium, and I know they're going to go home disappointed, and those kids are probably hanging their heads in the locker room because they laid everything on the line. But what a classy move by the community of Coldwater to stay around here and, and, and see that trophy passed on to St. John's. You know, they can still get a piece of it, yep. but they're going to need a little bit of help next week. But uh, what a classy move by Coldwater and, and uh, the community. The scoreboard that was brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Our free throw sponsor was Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. The three-point sponsor was Playmore Lanes in Coldwater. And our timeout sponsor tonight was Metzger Financial Services. I want to thank the athletic director here, Mr. Eric Goodman. We put this game together on the fly last week, and we really appreciate his help. Abby Beck and Zach Keith did all the work here in the facility as far as cameras and audio and so on. And Abby, Abby did some extra duty by hustling around. We had a little technical difficulties. We appreciate both of them. And Zach will take this back to the station and edit it all together. Delphi St. John's goes to 19-2, 8-0 in the MAC Conference. And they will play for an outright championship next week against the Marine Local Flyers. We're going to get to try to get an interview before we end up, end up our game this evening from Aaron Elder. We've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back with Delta St. John's coach, Aaron Elwer. Coach, if you paid your seven bucks to get in, you saw quite a high school basketball game. Yeah, it was, it had a little bit of everything. Um, obviously the crowds for both teams was, it was like district final like, um, and I think we expected that. We've been a part of a lot of great games on Fridays recently, um, and this is, this is the best one. It's the one that meant the most. Um, Coldwater is really, really good and really young. Um, so happy for our five seniors um, who have given so much and, it's, it's been a great ride. It's been a great regular season, and so happy for our guys in our school. Coach, it's easy to look at what Cam did offensively, but Austin Munter's defense was exceptional in the second half. Yeah. It's, it's why we are where we are. Like, guys have put egos aside. Like, when you can get guys to buy in and do some of the stuff that's not on the stat sheet or box score, you've got a chance. And we luckily have a, a really good player surrounded with a bunch of guys that that respect him and are willing to do whatever we need to do. They need to do to win, and and that's where we are. The best teams we've had have had kids like we've got, and that's why we continue to win. One more league game, Mary Local, in your yeah. place next week. Yeah, that's exciting. Like, um, you know, I, we don't want to share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it'll be our senior night. We'll have a great crowd. I know Marin will be ready, um, and our, I'm sure our guys will be ready, and uh, that will be exciting again as well. Aaron L, where his teams won at least a piece of the MAC championship chance to win it outright. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're back at Coldwater with Cameron Elwer. Cam, talk about the last shot. How to design? What happened with that uh, one? First, I was I was doing a back screen for Aaron, hoping my guy wouldn't come off, and we get Aaron for a layup. And then we had screen to screen action with Drew, and Austin made a heck of a pass, and I, and I made the shot. Coach, you put a lot of time in the gym, and it shows off in a game like this. What an environment you played in this evening. Uh, we're extremely blessed to be able to uh, play in this environment. Uh, I'm extremely proud of our guys for this opportunity, and, and we made the most of it. And next week's a week to be selfish because you want it all by yourself when you play Mary Local. For sure. We want our revenge from last year. Cameron Elwer, congratulations, Cam. His team takes a 60-57 win and moves on next week at least to share the championship and maybe outright. Thanks, Cam. Yeah, appreciate it.